This is part 16 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss while loop in JavaScript. These are the basic loops in JavaScript, while, do while and for. In this video, we'll discuss while loop and in a later video session, we'll discuss the rest of the loops. Let's understand while loop with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. We want to prompt the user to enter a number and then we want to print all the even numbers starting from zero till the number that the end user has provided. For example, if the end user enters 10, then we want to print even numbers from 0 till 10. So first, we need to prompt the user to enter a number. So let's use the prompt function for that. Please enter a target number. And in case if the end user didn't provide any value, then we want to return an empty string as the default. This prompt function is going to return the number in text format. So let's convert that to a number using the number function. And then let's store that number in this target variable. Now let's create another variable. Let's name it start and initialize that to zero because we want to start printing even numbers from zero. Now let's use the while loop. So we use the while keyword while start is less than or equal to target. What we want to do is write the value that is present in the start variable to the web page. And in order to do that, we are going to use the write function of the document object. So document dot write and then whatever value that you provide to this method, it's going to write that to the web page. So we want to write the value that is present within the start variable. And then we want to increment the start variable by two. All right, so let's quickly run this and test it. So let's enter, for example, 10 as the target number. Click OK. And notice that it prints, you know, even numbers from 0 till 10. But all of them are present on the same line. Let's print each even number on a separate line, which means we need an HTML break. So let's append HTML break to the number that we want to print. And with this, let's rerun this and see if we get the even numbers printed on a separate line. OK, so now let's see how this while loop works. So within the target variable, let's say, for example, if the end user has entered number 10, then in this variable, we have that value 10. And within start, we have 0. So the while loop has a condition at the beginning. Is 0 less than or equal to 10? That condition is true. So when the condition is true, then all the statements that are present inside the loop will be executed. Okay, so here we are writing the value that is present in the start variable to the web page. And then we are incrementing the value that is present in this variable by 2. So 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. And then it comes back and checks the condition again. Is 2 less than or equal to 10? So the condition is still true. So it's going to execute these statements again. So it's going to do this as long as the condition is true. Now when the value of this start variable become 10, you know, is 10 less than or equal to 10? The condition is still true. So it comes inside, print the value 10, and then increments the variable by 2. So 10 plus 2 equals 12. Is 12 less than or equal to 10? No, that's when the condition becomes false. As soon as the condition becomes false, it's going to end the loop. Okay, so that's how while loop works. Now let's talk about infinite while loops. So what can cause a while loop to become an infinite while loop? Failure to update the variable that participates in the condition will create a never-ending or infinite loop. Let's understand what we mean by this statement. Now, if you look at the condition that we have got here for the while loop, there are two variables that are participating in this condition, start and target number. Now, in our example, target number is 10, and it is always going to stay 10. It's, going, it's not going to change. But the value that is present in the start variable is going to change. Okay, we initialize that to zero, and then every time we increment it to two. So at some point, you know, this value is going to become greater than the target number, at which point the condition becomes true and the loop ends. But notice what we have done here. We have commented that line, which means the start variable will never be updated, will never be incremented. It is always going to stay zero. So if it is always going to stay 0, then 0 is always going to be less than or equal to 10, 
which means this condition will never become false. If this condition will never become false, then the control will never get out of this while loop. So it will repeatedly, infinitely keep executing this statement. So this is what causes infinite or never-ending loops. So we need to update these variables so that at some point, you know, the condition become false and the loop ends. So let's look at this in action. So if we comment this line, this is going to be always zeros, and zero is always going to be less than or equal to 10. So when we run this now, it will prompt us to enter a target number. Let's say, for example, if we enter 10, click OK. Look at that. It is processing, 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 processing. OK. Now, what is it doing behind the scenes? You know, it's it's continuously writing the value 0 to the web page. OK. And, you know, it is stuck there. Look at this. It is still processing. So basically, you know, our web page is frozen. So that's why it's very important to update the variables that's part, that participates in the condition. Um, you know, otherwise, we risk creating never-ending loops. Now, let's understand the use of break statement in a loop. Now, we know that if we use break statement inside a switch statement, you know, it causes the execution to break out of the switch statement. In a similar fashion, if we use break statement in a while loop, then it's going to end that loop early. Let's understand this with an example. So now we are prompting the user to enter a target number. Now, if the end user enters any number that is below 100 or 100, then we want to print all the even numbers from 0 till 100. But if they enter any number beyond 100, then we want to limit the even numbers only until 100, which means the absolute maximum that this program is going to print even numbers is only till 100. If they enter any number beyond 100, we are still going to print only numbers until 100. OK, so within the message, we'll just say, please enter a target number. And then we will say 100 and within brackets, maybe max. So we are telling the users to enter a number only until 100. But if they enter anything beyond 100, we are going to break this while loop after we have printed 100 even numbers. OK, so how are we going to break the while loop? So we will check the value of, that is present within the start variable. OK, if start is greater than 100, then what we want to do, we want to break out of the while loop. So as soon as this variable is greater than 100, it's going to come to this statement, OK, break. And then as soon as the interpreter encounters this statement, it's going to exit the while loop. OK, so let's quickly test this. Let's run this now. So if we enter a number you know, below 100, for example, 50, then it should print all the even numbers starting from 0 till 50. OK, so there we go. Now, if we enter 150, then it should only print even numbers till 100. OK, it's not going to go beyond 100. That is because as soon as this variable becomes greater than 100, you know, this condition becomes true. And this statement will be executed. When break statement is executed, the while loop is going to end. Now let's understand the use of continue statement. So what is this continue statement going to do? Continue statement tells the JavaScript interpreter to skip remaining code that is present after this statement and start the next iteration of the loop. Again, let's understand this with an example. So what we want to do is print all the odd numbers between 1 and 10. OK, so let's see how to do that. So we are not going to ask the user to enter a number. So we have the start variable, which is initialized to 10. And we are going to hard code the value 10 here. So while start is less than 10, what we want to do is increment the value that is present in this variable by 1. And then we are going to check if start modulus 2 equals 0. OK, that means if the number is even. OK, when we divide a number by 2, and if the remainder is 0, then we know it's an even number. If it's even number, then I'm using this continue keyword. OK? And then finally, here we are using the document object, document.write. And then we want to write the value that is present in the start variable. And then we want to append an HTML break so that each number will be printed on its own line. <clears throat> so 
let's look at what's happening here. So we have initialize start to 0. Is 0 less than 10? The condition is true, so it comes inside. Start is equal to start plus 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. So at the moment, within start variable, we have 1. 1 modulus 2, the remainder is not 0. So it is not going to go into this f block. So it comes here, write the value that is present in the start variable, which is 1. And then it goes back, it checks. Is 1 less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. And then it comes here, increments 1 by 1. So start is equal to 2. 2 modulus 2, the remainder is 0. So it comes inside the if statement, and this statement will be executed. Continue. OK, so as soon as this statement executes, what is going to happen? It's going to skip any statements that are present after that continue. You know, this rest of code within the while loop will be skipped. And then immediately, it goes to the next iteration of the loop. So at the moment, start value is 2. So is 2 less than 10? Yes, it's going to come inside. 2 plus 1 is 3. So start is 3. Uh, 3 modulus 2 is not 0. So it doesn't go inside. Write the value 3. So this way, it goes on until printing all the even numbers that are present between 1 and 10. I mean, all the odd numbers. So let's run this and see if that's the case. So it prints the odd numbers from 1 till 9. So continue, basically, when this statement executes, it's going to skip the rest of the instructions in the while loop, and then it immediately goes to the next iteration. Thank you for listening, and have a great day.